Shalom everyone, this is Ty Green. There's folks crying out for four more years, and for good reason. In part, the country is in shambles. Gonna share some clips. Then I want to encourage you to redirect your trust afterwards. Here we go. And this is what we must do to save our country from destruction. 2024 is the final battle. Uh, if we don't take it over, we're not gonna have a country anymore. I wanna be positive, I'm just telling you, you know, other countries need a strong America, not just us. Other countries need a strong America. The USA is a mess. Our economy is crashing. Inflation is out of control. Our banks are failing. Russia has joined with China. Saudi Arabia has joined with Iran. China, Russia, Iran, North Korea have formed together as a menacing and destructive coalition. Our currency is collapsing and the dollar will soon no longer be the world standard. Can you believe this? And that will be our greatest defeat in over 200 years if we lose the dollar. There's a really good chance that we will. But it won't happen with me, not even a small chance. We are a failing nation. We are a nation in decline. That's what's happening. I hate to say it. It makes you sick to say it. Trump stated, this is what we must do to save our country from destruction. What would really save our country from destruction is this. The instruction was to Israel. But there is a key here that we need to see. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which were called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Seek the Lord, turn from our wicked ways. This means to repent from sin. And if we did this, God would forgive us and some healing would take place. 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's not just America that needs to be saved from destruction. This not only applies to the United States, but every single country, because the earth belongs to the Lord. Psalms 24 verse 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. See that? And they that dwell therein. So to put our trust in any other one other than the Lord to save us from destruction is a foolish move. This goes for Trump or anyone else. What country do you live in? Yeah, that person too. So there's some deep stuff coming up and there's a lot at stake. So yes, this is much deeper than a presidential candidate or the next leader within your respective countries, surely. God can use anyone in any office for his objective, but your trust is in God, right? Not the person in office. Now, when Trump stated that we're not going to have a country anymore, that's interesting, especially relative to scripture regarding the end times. And if America is indeed Mystery Babylon, which I believe that she is, then she is gone in a few short years from now. This is indeed sad, but folks still don't believe it's going to happen or that it's not going to happen within our lifetime. Trump also says our currency is collapsing and our dollar will no longer be the world standard. But he said that it won't happen with me, not even a small, chance. The USA 
is a mess. Our economy is crashing. Inflation is out of control. Our banks are failing. Russia has joined with China. Saudi Arabia has joined with Iran. China, Russia, Iran, North Korea have formed together as a menacing and destructive coalition. Our currency is collapsing, and the dollar will soon no longer be the world standard. Can you believe this? And that will be our greatest defeat in over 200 years if we lose the dollar. There's a really good chance that we will. But it won't happen with me, not even a small chance. Just like hmm. In regards to the economy, we're seeing where the dollar is headed. Everybody's seeing it all over the world. We're aware of the economic connection to the global collapse. This is where BRICS comes in, with the moves of China and Russia. Moreover, the applicants of Iran and Saudi Arabia play a big part in this too, not only with the impact of the petrodollar shifting away, but as a representative of the crowns, talking about Saudi Arabia, noted with the horns on this rising multipolar world power, all described within scripture, and we're watching this happen. Folks here in the States will think about how the economy seemed so much better when Trump was in office. Many will make a decision based on just that alone. Yet, whether Trump is in office or not, it's going down. We must remember where we are with this scripture. It will be dreadful and terrible, just like the prophet Daniel shared within the book of Daniel, chapter 7. Let's look at that. Daniel 7. Let's pick it up at verse 7. Daniel says, After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. See, this beast is symbolic of a kingdom that is upcoming. The Antichrist will rise from within this multipolar world power. Further down within Daniel chapter 7, same thing, verse 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. That's an additional detail we didn't have before earlier in the chapter. Which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shred it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and time and the dividing of time. We know that's three and a half years. Now, Trump says that we are a nation in decline here in the U.S. We are a failing nation. We are a nation in decline. That's what's happening, I hate to say it. It makes you sick to say it. Yet, the whole world is in decline. There is only one Savior. There is only one that can save our respective nations from destruction. Natural disasters, famine, earthquakes, war, pestilence, failing economies, and the list goes on, but there is only one savior that can actually save us. I know some say that we don't need a savior. You 
cannot sit back and wait for a savior. You can't opt out because you don't feel sufficiently inspired by this or that particular candidate. This is not a rock concert. This is not Coachella. <laughs> we don't need a messiah. Yeah, we need a savior. Those that say we don't must not be aware of the serious trouble that mankind is in. Destruction in the flesh and in the spirit. Yes, we need a savior, and it's Jesus Christ. But many in the world reject him. So, an antichrist, one who is instead of Christ, one who is against Christ, will rise up and the world will worship him and the dragon Satan. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Yet the world will do it. Revelation 13 verse four, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him. See that? Folks worshiping Satan outright. Go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Satan is that dragon. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. See that? Which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now go back to Revelation chapter 13, where we will see folks worshiping the Antichrist after he reaches full power, when he becomes the beast personified. Look at what happens after the false prophet comes up on the scene. Biblically, here he is referred to as the second beast. Revelation 13, let's pick it up at verse 11. And I beheld another beast. This is Apostle John recording this. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. See, they are worshiping this guy the world will have gone mad, worse than it is now. In a few short years, this will be it. And he does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. That's the false prophet doing that. And further down in the chapter, we see he is the one responsible for the mark of the beast. Now, I want to redirect your trust from man. Don't put it in Trump or Biden or any other than the Lord. No matter where we are in the world, look at this Psalm 146 and 3. Put not your trust in princes nor in the Son of Man in whom there is no help. Again, put not your trust in man. In these times, this is a reminder to redirect our trust from man and to place it in God. We must place our trust in God. Psalms chapter 56, verse 11, in God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Folks will come along like Trump and many others they will say some good things and make promises and point to everything other than the cross. Should we really expect anything different? This is not to discourage participation in any elections around the world. That's not my point. We still live in the world. However, we in Christ are not of it. Yet we must occupy until the Lord comes, right? So that's not what this is about. This is about our priorities. I'm just saying, God first, trust him. We certainly need to repent of sin as we're watching the very steps 
leading into a time of judgment upon the earth. If you're in Christ, don't be afraid as we watch this 2 Timothy 1 and 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The whole point of biblical prophecy is to encourage those in Christ that Jesus is coming. It also serves as a warning to us all that this world will soon fall into judgment due to sin and iniquity. Trust Jesus. This is not so that we will be in fear. It is to encourage faith. Faith in Jesus Christ. It is to encourage us to repentance and toward salvation through Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 and 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the richness of his grace. 2 Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 1 John 1 and 9 If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Today is the day of salvation. You can be prepared to meet God right now. You must believe in your heart that Jesus died for you on that cross. For we have all sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. For we all have a sin debt that we cannot pay. The wages of sin is death, right? So we must trust in what Jesus did for us up on that cross. We must believe it with our hearts and confess it with our mouths. Jesus was buried and on the third day, God raised him up. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So just come as you are. Look at this, Titus 3, verses 3 through 7. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. All right, I will leave it right there. We must use our remaining time wisely. Amen. Live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom.